Welcome to Weekly Code Quickies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host and creator of Weekly Code Quickies, Norbert PM, and this is episode number 37. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at CSS frameworks versus custom CSS. Well, as always, you can get the entire presentation from my blog, which is down in the episode description. So after we're done with this episode, you can go ahead, check out the link and just download the entire thing. Now, before we get started with with the episode, I do want to mention that this is not a direct comparison with a clear winner at the end. This is not the purpose of the episode. The purpose of the episode is just to mainly uh, make you familiar with different situations where you should use frameworks, CSS frameworks, and where you should use custom CSS. As, and what is the difference between the two of them? So let's take a look, first of all, at CSS, fra at CSS frameworks and some of the positive things which are pre-built styles. Now, CSS frameworks provide pre-written CSS styles and components that you can easily include in your web projects. CSS frameworks also offer predetermined buttons, styles with various sizes, colors, and shapes. Developers can easily apply these styles by adding specific classes to the HTML tags or the HTML elements. Also typography, Frameworks come with predefined typography styles for headings, paragraphs, uh, lists, and other text elements. They often include default font sizes, line heights, and font families to maintain consistency across the website. CSS frameworks also provide grid systems that enable developers to create responsive layouts efficiently. Grid systems typically consist of a set of predefined classes for different col columns and rows, making it easy to organize content on different screen sizes, of course. Now, frameworks offer pre-style pre forms also. Elements such as input fields, checkboxes, radio buttons, and select dropdowns. These styles ensure consistency approach, approach and behavior across different browsers and devices. This is very important. Remember different browsers and devices because if not, well, you have to differently style for Mozilla or you're using just WebKits and so forth and so on, but you have to include those different styles for Mozilla, for Chrome, for Firefox. Each of them uses uh, grid systems and flex boxes in a different way. Okay, so also CSS frameworks include pre-designed pre nav bars. This is so cool because I I sometimes hate <laughs> styling my own nav bars or styling them from scratch. They also include drop down menus and responsive behaviors. Developers can, so you can customize these navigation bars according to their design requirements, of course. Now, frameworks also provide pre styled alerts and notification components. These are so useful. I constantly use them. Oh, of course, I did create my own ones, and I'm going to come to this a bit later in, uh, in this episode. But Please do note that if you're using a framework, this makes your life much, much easier. These components often come with predefined colors, icons, and animations, of course. So they are pretty cool. If you're using uh, Bootstrap or Tailwind CSS, they, have get, uh, they are really quick to get started alerts and props and so forth and so on. So also nav bars, everything that I'm telling you. Also, many CSS frameworks offer pre-designed card and panel components for displaying content in a visual appealing manner. Also, we're going to come to this, this, this card part, we're going to come to this to, at the end of the episode. So please stick around because I want to show you something really cool. Now, these components may include optional options for headers, footers, images, bodies, and content, so forth and so on, but they do have limitations. Now, I did play around a lot with these things and believe me, they do have limitations. So consistency is one of the most important things in CSS frameworks. They ensure consistency across different parts of the website, meaning that it is easy to maintain a uniform design. And sometimes uh, junior developers mess up this part. It's very really important when, when you're at the beginning to, well, to use a framework because it's going to help you a lot. So consistency in CSS frameworks is achieved through standardized styles and components that ensure a cohesive design across the entire website. So if you're watching this on, on a video, so if you're watching the video version of this podcast, here are some examples for how CSS frameworks 
uh, promote consistency. For example, uh, displays for, for buttons, for navigations, that always have the, exactly the same style, which is also a negative effect because it's pretty easy to spot a bootstrap or a tailwind styled website. Now, by using pre-built components and styles, you can speed up the development process significantly. So this is why one of the main reasons developers do use frameworks is just to get something up and running quickly. Okay, now let's also take a look at responsive design. Many CSS frameworks come with building responsive design. And I also touched on this really briefly with the, with the grid system. Uh, they make things so much easier. They make it so much easier to create websites that work well on various devices and screen sizes. And believe me, when you're messing around with constant new phones that are appearing on the market, you will see that those screen sizes are just killing you. So this is where a CSS framework comes in and can help you a lot. Now, what are the main CSS frameworks out there? Well, I would say Bootstrap, Foundation, Bulma, and Tailwind CSS. So once again, Bootstrap, Foundation, Bulma, and Tailwind CSS. I personally recommend Bootstrap and Tailwind CSS. I also work with them. Uh, foundational, Foundation and Bulma, I never touched them. I just, well, I did touch them and take a brief look at them. I do prefer Bootstrap and Tailwind CSS. Also, before we get into some of the custom CSS, I do want to mention that I have a complete Bootstrap course. I will link it down in the description below. So if you want to check it out, then please do so. Follow the link down there. There's also a coupon code included and you should be good to go after that course, creating awesome looking Bootstrap sites. So let's move on with the power of custom CSS. Now, why is this so good? Although it's a lot of work because you have to build everything from the, from well, almost from scratch, except if you're using SAS and you already created your own little framework, which I do have a course on it, but CSS is extremely powerful. And the most important part about it is that it is constantly growing. They also working on adding, what are they adding right now? Um, uh, not media queries, at rules, at rules, some kind of at rule. I can't remember. Hmm. Ah, scope. They're adding scope. They're playing around with using scope. You can, a uh, really quick example, really quick example. And, if, and for those of you who, who are using, uh, react style components, this is going to sound extremely familiar because the style component only applies to style to a specific component. It's not going to apply it to the entire website. And that is where, or to the entire application, there is where uh, this scope rule will be, will come extremely handy because you can apply style to a specific part of your website. I know you can use classes, but I'm going to make an episode on that. It's pretty powerful. Okay, so let's move on. Now, custom CSS allows you to create style-specific tailored CSS to your project requirements. And this is so awesome when we can play around with stuff, but also playing around is time consuming. So this is where frameworks again are much more powerful, but CSS does have the power to create your own custom style. So let's continue on. You do have complete control over the design of your layout of your website. So without being limited by the constraints of a framework and yes, framework, as I said, they do have some negative parts. They do, cons they do look alike. And I do not like that at all. Here you have the possibility to do your own border radiuses, to do your own line distances, your line heights, your own box shadows, your drop shadows. Is, I do love custom CSS and I am using it. Actually, I'm using it more than frameworks, but, but frameworks do have their positive sides. Again, as I said, if you want to test something out really quickly, just drop in a framework in there, it's going to work. Now, CSS also is means optimization. Custom CSS enables you to write, write only the style you need, which can lead to a leaner and more optimized style sheet. And also writing custom CSS provides a opportunity to deepen your understanding of CSS concepts and best practices. And this is so important to actually know CSS. Uh, remember also in my bootstrap course, I'm 
to the end of it, I am teaching you how you can use SAS to customize Bootstrap at the end. But it's so it's such a huge hustle and you ha do have to download the entire Bootstrap in your project. So again, I am for customization and I am for your own style, but quick and dirty also works. So however, creating a custom CSS from scratch can be time consuming, especially for complex layouts or large scale pro projects. But, but I do have to mention then all large scale projects need customization at the end of the day. So before we come to a conclusion and before we wrap this entire episode up, I do want to mention that if you do want to learn custom CSS or you're just a complete beginner in CSS or a bit more advanced, I do have some amazing courses on CSS, specifically on CSS, on Flexbox, grid, uh, grid system, animation, also on SAS. I do have an entire SAS course, so please check them out in the video description or in the episode description. And with this being said, let's just take a breather. And in, in summary, I would say that CSS frameworks offer conventions, consistency, and a rapid development, while custom CSS provides flexibility, optimization, and a deeper understanding of the CSS principles. The choice between the choice between them depends on the factors such as project requirements, development time, and personal preferences. Often, a combination of both approaches is used in web development projects. As do I <laughs> combine the powers of frameworks and custom CSS. I also combine the powers of React with vanilla JavaScript. So with this being said, Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, give this a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a review on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening or watching this. If you are on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to this channel. I am creating courses. I'm creating video tutorials. And oh, by the way, I did want to show you this really last thing on custom CSS. I'm just going to make this a bit larger. These, this right here is a game that my friends and I are working on. It's going to be a board game. And these are a lot of cards. And I created these cards using CSS. If you ever play the board game, you know that there are cards. And I created everything that you see here using custom CSS. Okay, so all of these cards are created. Hey, where are my images? Uh, they are created using custom CSS. So you can see, extremely powerful. I couldn't use a framework here. Believe me, I tried. It was just not custom customizable enough. <laughs> okay. Friends, uh, catch you next time. Bye-bye.